So this morning, um, my cousin uh, sent me the Constantine's Creed. I didn't even know that it had all this stuff in there. And what I want to do is read it to you today, and I will show you where the Christians formally codified the rejection of Yehoshua HaMoshiach, the Jewish Messiah, Moshiach, and turn to the devil's Messiah. So, so this is a PDF file. And what I'm going to do is, is on uh, Faithlanders' website. I'm going to read this first, and then I'm going to go directly to the Constantine Creed, so that there is no way you can possibly say, "Well, this article is slanted, is perverted, making you try to believe something that is not true." No, I'm going to provide you with. Two witnesses. Okay? This one and this one. Alright, we're going to start with this one first. Christianity as we know it today is a break off from Catholicism with a good deal of false and pagan teachings, most of which was put in place through the mandate of Constantine. This is what Constantine would demand with the cooperation of the church with his bishops, elders, and teachers, all of which were appointed by him. So what this means is, is all the churches that, that are in existence today branched off of Constantine, the Constantine religion. Anyone, especially the Jews, in order to become what is called a Christian, must adhere to the Constantine Creed. And this is Constantine's Creed. <clears throat> now, please listen carefully. All I'm doing here is reading verbatim. I'm going to show you what my belief system is as compared to the Constantine's Creed. So I'm going to read to you the Constantine's Creed. I in no way believe in the Constantine's Creed. In fact, I am the enemy of the Constantine's Creed. So, and I quote... I renounce all customs, rites, legalisms, unleavened breads, and sacrifice of lambs of the Hebrews, and all other feasts of the Hebrews, sacrifices, prayers, aspirations, purifications, sanctifications, and procreations, and fasts, and new moons, and Shabbats, and superstitions, and hymns, and chants, and observance, and synagogues, absolutely everything Jewish. Now, absolutely everything Jewish. That means the Jewish Messiah. That's the reason why they changed the name. They rejected the Jewish Messiah and made their own fake and false Messiah. Let me continue. I repeat, they renounce all customs absolutely everything Jewish, every law, right, and custom, and if afterwards I wish to deny and return to Jewish superstition, or shall be found eating with Jews, or feasting with them, or secretly conversing and condemning the Christian religion instead of openly confuting them, and condemning their vain faith, then let the trembling of Cain and leprosy of Gehazi cleave unto, well, unto them. 
as well as the legal punishments to which I acknowledge myself liable, as they say. Again, this is in quotations. This is absolutely my, not my belief system whatsoever. And as I said, I will show you my belief system in a few minutes. And that I may be anathema in the world to come, and may my soul be set down with, and this is what they say, may my soul be set down with Satan and the devils. Now, furthermore, any follower of the Jewish Messiah, Yehoshua HaMashiach, who wishes to join this holy community, was forced to adopt a different set of rules and customs. Subsequently, special creeds were drafted to which the Christian would have to swear in this way. <clears throat> and I quote, I accept all customs, rites, legalisms, and feasts of the Romans, sacrifices, prayers, purification with water, sanctifications by Pontificus Maximus, the high priest of Rome, propriations and feasts, and the new Sabbath, So day, day of the sun, that would be the day of Baal, the sun idol. <clears throat> all new chants and observances and all the foods and drinks of the Romans. In other words, absolutely accept everything Roman and every new rite and custom of Rome and a new Roman religion. Now, additionally, in approximately 365 A.D., as they say, the Council of Laodicea wrote in one of their canons, Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Lord's Day, a.k.a. Sunday. But if any of them shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be anathema against, as they say, Christ. <clears throat> Note, Protestants are included. As they still observe the holiday and Sabbath of Rome, as in, are you going to church this coming Lord's Day? So no, you Baptists, you Mennonites, Amish, whatever branch, JWs, you do the same thing. Now, am I condemning anybody for not keeping Shabbat? No. You see, um, the Roman way made sure that in the last days that it would not even be possible to keep Shabbat as the Torah is written. And for that reason, there is a scripture that I want to show you, that I showed you just the other day, uh, in, the rest, in the restoration, or in the, what is the word that they had in there? I'll, one of them is the restoration of all things. Okay, so this is in Acts 3, verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which Jehovah has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. What do you mean by the restoration of all things? So, Yahushua must remain in heaven until the time of the restitution of all things which Jehovah has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This day of restitution of all things is the restoration of all Israel. And once again, I'm looking for, I'm thinking about, uh, in the refreshing, I believe that's it. Uh, refreshing. 
Come on, man. And they're refreshing. It has to be. I might have to Google it. And the regeneration. Ah! There it is, right there. Metitiahu, not Matthew, 19, verse 28. Now I have to use Strong's Concordance because you know, and I have showed you many, many times, that the name is not Jesus, never was Jesus, never shall be Jesus. That was a replacement name. To remove Yehoshua and replace it with the Roman Messiah. His name is Yehoshua right here, not Jesus. Okay? And Yehoshua said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, that would be the renewal, the new birth of Israel, that when, that's when Israel will be born again, and all those who are grafted in the branches of Israel shall be born again. You are not born again today. The renewal, the birth. The new beginning, the new birth, the born again. When does that happen? When does being born again happen? When the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you, the twelve disciples, will be sit down on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, not the church. That's the restoration. That is when all things will be restored. What do you mean by that, Henry? Let as written, as uh, written, uh, given by Jehovah, not God, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. Now, Uh, new moons. Now there was a time. There was a time, he said, Jehovah said, I hate your new moons and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. However, the restore, restoration of all things says it is in, I believe, Isaiah 66. <sighs> and it shall come to pass this is after the Gentiles are defeated and all Israel, right here, you can read the whole thing, will be taken from the Gentiles and put in their own land by the two witnesses. And right here, you can hear, see right here where it says, He will send fugitives, escapees, fugitives to... Tarshish first to Tubal, Pul and Lud, Yavan, and to the coastlands, not to have not heard my fame, but to hear my fame, to see my glory, and they will declare my glory among the Gentiles, and they, the two witnesses, will bring all of your brethren as an offering unto Jehovah, out of the Gentiles upon birds, that word Seuss means birds, and in chariots, buses, cars, and in covered wagons, buses, cars, and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says Jehovah, because the children of Israel are going to be an offering and a clean vessel unto Jehovah, the house of Jehovah. 
And at that time, new heaven and a new earth will I make, shall remain before me, says not the Lord, but Jehovah, right there, so that your seed and your name shall remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon into another, and from one Shabbat to another, shall all flesh come to worship me before me, says Jehovah. And they will be forced, just like people go and look at the um, uh, Dachau and places like that to see what they did to the Jews, the Gentiles will be forced to go and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against him. Okay? Now we go to, back to, Uh, the, the second, this is the actual Constantine Creed. Where, and I will show you right here where they say they renounce all customs, rites, legalisms, unleavened bread, sacrifices of lambs of the Hebrews, and all the other feasts of the Hebrews, sacrifices, prayers, aspirations, purifications, sanctifications, appropriations, fasts, and new moons and Shabbats. They reject. Well, they're going to find out that when Yehoshua returns, that all things Israel, including the new moons, including the Shabbats, are going to be reinstated. Yes, I said reinstated. And as I pointed out many times, the Gentiles have made this world in such a way that even the Jews are not able to keep the Shabbat correctly. But that's going to change. All right? It's going to happen. We read it here. Until the restoration of all things, he must remain. Until, until the time for the restoration of all things. And we saw in uh, Metityahu where he comes to restore all things Israel. Now, Now, what I want you to understand is this Constantine Creed was codified into law. This early document of the Roman Catholic Church, established by Emperor Constantine and codified at the Council of Nicaea, is a fundamental but little-known policy of the Catholic Church. Oh, it's not little-known. It's agreed by every congregation who observes Sunday. It is an attempt, not just distance from, but to destroy the connection of their new religion, Christianity, from as they say its origins, but it does not this Christianity here has no origins in the Hebraic Jewish culture. But also are decrees from subsequent Catholic councils. And you can see right here, everything is here, as stated in the previous uh, website that I showed you, and there's something here. When the question arose concerning the most, most holy day of Easter, it was decreed by common consent to be expedient that this festival should be celebrated in the same day by all in every place, and truly in the first place, it seemed to everyone a most unworthy thing that we should follow the custom of other Jews in celebration of this most holy solemnity 
who polluted wretches, as they say, having stained their hands with a nefarious crime, and they accused the Jews while they themselves did the same thing. Are justly blinded in their minds, it is fit therefore that rejecting the practices of this people we should perpetuate to all future ages the celebration of this right in a more legitimate order. Let us have nothing in common with the most hostile rabble of the Jews. So they separated themselves from the Jews. They rejected the words of Paul in Romans 11. They repudiated the words of Paul in Romans 11. And some of the words of Paul in Romans 11 are, and I, uh, verses 25 through 26, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you, Romans, should be wise in your own conceit, that partial blindness happened to Israel until the time of the Gentiles expires. The last sands of time of the Gentiles drops. And so all Israel shall be saved. For out of Zion shall come the Deliverer. And this also they have rejected. Who will turn unrighteousness from Jacob because this is my covenant with them, Israel, when I shall take away their sins. And because the church has rejected the new covenant, if you reject one part of the new covenant, you reject the whole thing. And they rejected the whole thing. Now, condemnation comes upon the church when the time of the Gentiles comes to the end. So, the Council of Nicaea, 325, setting a brand new Holy Day of Easter as a resurrection of, not, they didn't, they, they rejected Yehoshua. They now call, they now say Jesus. Distinct from the biblical dates of Pishach and the first fruits, his actual death and resurrection, this decree was read by Constantine and sent to churches everywhere. When the question arose about, about that day, it was decreed by common consent to be expedient. So expedience was more important than the truth. You see? Out of expedience, but not out of the truth, that this festival should be celebrated on the same day by all in every place. Now, the creed to which Christians would have to swear in everything that we read in the prior article is written right here. The Council of Antioch. Christians were banned from celebrating the Passover Seder, the ritual meal with Jewish friends or neighbors. The Council of Laodicea, the biblical Sabbath day, was outlawed. Now, let me show you what is going to happen to the Laodiceans in the last days. Revelation 3, verse 15, I know your works. Well, we'll start in verse 14. To the messenger of the Ecclesia of the Laodicean and write, These things says the truth teller, the reliable one, and the true witnesses. To the true witness. The the king or magisterial starting point of the creation of not God, not Deus, but Jehovah. 
I know your works, you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm. Well, you see, Christians today, they will sit down and eat and drink with the Jews now. They will even confess that they are guilty of the blood of the Jews in the Holocaust. I've showed you that. But they are lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And oh my, oh my, oh my, is this last generation guilty of that. And you do not know that you are wretched. You are not prepared for the day of judgment at all. And miserable and poor. And how much food do you have stored away should any sort of calamity come? If the nukes start dropping, do you have enough food in your storage facility to last for two or three days? You probably don't. Blind and naked. I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich. So he's saying here, I will spew you out of my mouth as opposed to what he says to the Ecclesia in Philadelphia. And what, pray tell, sets the, the Ecclesia in Philadelphia apart from Laodicea? I know your works. Look, I set before you an open door. Open door to what? Open door to New Jerusalem. Why? That no man can shut it. Because you have a little strength. You have done two things. Kept my word. That is charity. That's concerning charity. I talked about that yesterday. And two, you have not denied my name. What is his name? Yehoshua. Jesus is name denial. So they will join Israel in, they will join the Jews in Isaiah 60. Stand side by side with the Jews when the Gentiles will be forced to bow down at the soles of their feet. As it is stated in Isaiah 60. I will show it to you. Right? The sons also that afflicted them. Afflicted who? What is this talking about? Israel. That afflicted Israel. Shall come bending to you. And all those that despised you that took hold of this Constantine creed to utterly reject everything Jewish, those that despise you shall bow themselves at the soles of your feet. So obviously the Ecclesia of Philadelphia, brotherly love, considered the Jews their brothers, and did not deny the name of Yehoshua. Because of this, they will stand side by side with the people of Israel and those who took hold of the Nicene Creed will be forced to bow down at the soles of their feet. And they will be forced to call Yerushalayim, the city of, not the Lord, but Jehovah, Zion, the Holy of Israel. That's right. Now, so they pronounced a curse upon anyone who feasted with the Jews, who ate with the Jews, 
who communed with the Jews, who took part in any of the Jewish feasts they did, they cursed them. So now, the Nicene Creed Christians, namely the Sunday Keepers, and the followers of Jesus are now cursed because they cursed the Jews. And now everything that they cursed the Jews with, they must receive double. Revelation 18 and verse 4, And I heard another voice from the sky saying, Come out of her, my people. That would be the Jews. And those who had the Philadelphia, the Gentiles who had the Philadelphia mentality, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto the sky. And Jehovah has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. So do to her as she did to the Jews, and do it to her double, according to her works, in the cup that she has filled, filled to her double. Uh, synagogue, uh, Ecclesia, and... Ecclesia and Synagogue. May take a minute to find the correct one. Or the one that I prefer to show you. There's so many of them. Last sentence is gold. I don't know what he's talking about. I guess I'll have to check that out. Somewhere. This is one of them, but some of them have literally this cup that she has in her hand made out of gold. It is the most interesting. Here's, here is Ecclesia with a crown on her head and a golden cup in her hand. Somewhere I will see it. Somewhere it's here. Here's another one, but it's not gold. Okay. But I have many, many videos I have shown you this. All right. We'll just go up to this one here. To that one. As you can see, this is on a, a video or an article about the origins of anti-Semitism. It results from here. Ecclesia being the Roman church with a crown on her head and this golden cup in her hand. And there are pictures that shows this cup is indeed golden. And so... In the cup which she has filled, filled to her double, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give to her. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen. Yes, queen, which means she has a crown of gold on her head right there. I sit as a queen. That's Ecclesia did this. The Roman church And am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore her plagues shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is Jehovah Elohim who judges her. If the shoe fits, you must wear it. Now, what I want to do, 
is I want to show you I'm not done writing this up but this is mine you can come up with your own I'm not suggesting that anyone adopt this creed this is my creed for myself I want to share it with you today I Henry Swarry Swarry Schwartzy Schwartz yes that's right these are names that all of my uh, forefathers had. Yes, it is a very common Jewish last name. And I put in here Ben Ezra. This is for all the Jews out there. This is really how my name should be, Henry Ben Ezra, because my dad's name was Ezra. Repudiate the Constantine Nicene Creed yesterday, today, and forever. I repudiate all the pagan holidays, rituals, hymns, graven images, feasts and chants of Rome and its Jezebel Church. I reject the fake Roman Messiah named Jesus Christ and expose him continually as the fake and fraudulent Roman counterfeit of the true Yehoshua HaMoshiach. I recognize that Yehoshua HaMoshiach will come to restore all things to Israel as foretold in the words of the prophets. I recognize that Christians believe that Yehoshua HaMoshiach is their enemy and will fight against him when he comes to save Israel. I recognize that because the Roman church cursed Israel in the Nicene Creed that the church shall receive double every curse of their venomous mouth spewed against the Jew. I will continue to openly expose Rome, both East and West civilizations, and warn them of their impending damnation until the day that every Jew and everyone who proclaims Shem Yehovah receives salvation in Jerusalem, or until the last breath, my last breath, or until the last breath, my body, of whichever comes first, or leaves my body, of uh, whichever comes first. So there is my creed. I strongly urge each and every one of you to examine yourself, find out where your faith is, and write your creed down. This is mine. And to all of those who are listening, I hope to see you in Jerusalem when all Israel shall receive its salvation.